texts this morning. Please turn with us to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, with the Lord being our helper, we want to look at verses 8 uh, through 11, uh, but really want to look at verse 10. Want to look at verses 10. Uh, as we look here today, Luke chapter 2 and verses 8. Uh, Luke chapter 2 and verses 8. Uh, it is Christmas time. Uh, uh, we, are, we are excited about that. Uh, I, you may say, well, uh, preacher, you talk an awful lot about decorations. You must be a, a, a old Scrooge. No, I'm, I, my kids may think I am because they think they need to put up a, uh, all this stuff before, uh, before Halloween. But uh, I'm not a Scrooge. Uh, I, I just want to emphasize on the major of Christmas. Amen? And that's Jesus. Brought to us in a lonely manger so that we could have peace in our life. That's what Christmas is all about. All this other stuff is good, and it's, it, it has its part. I, I'm not, you know, however, whatever your traditions are, however that is, uh, you know, that's, it has its part. Uh, but I, I want to look at Jesus. I want to preach Jesus. I want to look at Him for what He's done for us. This uh, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, I... I I was looking at some pictures and some of my great uncles, and, and I looked there, and, and it kind of uh, it kind of caught my eye of my great uncle Jim. Uh, he learned that I'd started preaching and accepted the call to preach, and I believe he even called, and that was very unusual. And he said, "If you just remember, just preach Jesus, just preach Jesus." And you know, as I think today, I just. I want my messages to be around Jesus. You know, He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the originator of what we have here today. And, and I just want to preach Him today. But if you have your Bibles and you, and you found your place and you're physically able to stand, I, I know with the, pardon me, I know with the floors, the way they're sloped, I, I know, it, let's stand today if you're physically able to. If you're not, uh, we understand that. Uh, we understand if you have knee trouble, these floors are not the best. And, and I, I completely understand that. But, but in Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, and the Bible says, and there, was, there was in, and there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I, I, bring, you, I bring you good tidings of great joy." Now listen to this, which shall be to all people. Listen to that. Let me read verse 10 again. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Please underline that or circle or, 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 or mark in your Bible, if you mark in your Bible, underline which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, which is uh, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Father, Lord, I love you today. Lord, I thank you for unworthy as we are, unfit. We don't deserve it. But Lord, you gave us the very best gift that anyone could ever receive, and it's Jesus. It, 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 we never grow out of it. Uh, we just kind of grow into it more and more. Lord, it never grows out of style. It just keeps getting better and better. And Lord, He knows who we are and where we are. And Lord, I thank You for that. Give us strength here this morning. In Jesus' name, and amen. You may be seated. Now they say, if you eat turkey, I think this is just a good reason to take a nap. So whoever come up with this. They say if you eat turkey, you get sleepy. Well, if I ate as much as I did Thursday, I'd be sleepy to all the time, too. So I hope you didn't have turkey for breakfast. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'll try to keep this relevant, and I'll try to keep this on a timely manner. But I want to look at verse 10, and I want to look at all that God has provided for us. You know, we see here, the, uh, have you ever wondered why he come to lowly shepherds? You know, have you ever wondered why, you know, he didn't come to the law? You know, the, uh, he, he come to his own and his own re, uh, received him not, right? Uh, he come there, but they, they refused him. You know, I wonder why he didn't come to somebody that was high in society and had prestige and honor. 
but he came to lowly shepherds. You know, I'm grateful today that he came to lowly shepherds. I'm grateful today that he come to some old, uh, if they had collars, uh, they may have not even been blue collar. They may have been brown and they may have been black and they may have been dirty. Uh, and they come to all types of people. That's what we want to see here today. I don't care what color we are of our skin. God doesn't look and see a color of skin and we shouldn't either, amen? God doesn't look and see, well, you've got a funny accent and this person don't. Boy, I'm glad God doesn't look at my funny accent. God doesn't look at what our talents are, what our inabilities are, or our abilities are. He looks at which shall all come to all people. I'm the all people. You're the all people today. And as I think here today, we can see here that he come to all. He come to worry, he come to be worshipped by all, and he come to tell about a new uh, opportunity that we all have. Aren't you grateful today that it wasn't just uh, this person and this person? You know, growing up, I never fit in to the crowd. And just to be honest with you, today I still don't fit in the crowd. When, uh, when God made me, he broke the mold. Aren't you grateful? <laughs> I, I, aren't you grateful today I was going to say something but I better not <laughs> but you know, when he come to us I, I'm grateful today that he give us joy I, I'm grateful today it doesn't matter who we are or where we've come from but he thought so much that he come to all I didn't fit in growing up you know, uh, junior high is, is a hard age anyway. Uh, junior high, uh, I don't have any nice words to say about junior high. I don't have too many nice words to say about high school. I didn't, school and uh, those years were just not very good. I didn't like them. If I knew that I didn't need high school and, I, and if, if my parents wasn't so uh, just... Uh, you're going to do this and this, and I had enough understanding that if I didn't, I knew that they would keep their word, I would not have even finished school. I, it wasn't, I didn't, I, I, there was no, you know, everybody says, well, I'm going to miss school. I didn't miss school. I wish I'd have tried. I missed, I missed that. I wish I could go back. I, no, I don't wish I could go back, but I wish I'd have tried when I was there. So I didn't fit in. And there's a lot of instances today that I just don't fit in. You know, it's, it's, I, I try, but sometimes it's just we don't fit in. It's just because we're Christians. And you know what? We're not supposed to fit in. But no matter if we're part of the crowd or no matter if we're not, no matter if we live in, 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 a wonderful, uh, in a wonderful cardboard box that keeps us dry because somebody gave us a tarp, or we live on a mansion somewhere back on a mountainside, it really doesn't matter where we live, how we were raised, or who we are. Christ came for all of us. And let's look here today. He says here He's come for all of us. Let's see here over in, in Isaiah. I want to get started here very quickly. I, over here in Isaiah chapter 45 and, and verses Verses 22, uh, it tells us what he come for and it tells us what he done for us and, and what he's doing for us today. It says, look unto me. And, and, and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. He says, look unto me. It says there's no other place, there's no other person, there's no other way contrary to what New Age people believe and contrary to what the liberals believe today. There is only one way to heaven, and there is only one way, and it's by and through Jesus Christ, exclamation point. That's the only way. And, and it's through Him that we have salvation. It is through Him that we are saved. It is through Him that we have joy un unspeakable and full of glory. It is through and by Him that we can stand rest assured that He is there for us. We see over in Romans chapter 10 and verses, uh, verses 12, it also tells, it says a point and it makes a point that there is something here today that we hold to. Romans chapter 10 and verses 12, it says there is no different. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, uh, uh, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. So you could be from North Carolina. God doesn't care. You can be from somewhere out west. God doesn't care. You can be from Florida. You can be from East Tennessee. 
You could be from a foreign country. God doesn't care where you've come from. God makes no difference. Can you imagine the, the, the shepherds as they were watching the flo- flock by night and, and they were in the field watching the flock by night and lo, an angel of the Lord appeared unto them and gave them great tidings of great joy. It says, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in the, this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He's saying, listen, he has come for all, and all can accept him. All can accept him. Do you remember them picking teams? A lot of times I ended up being last, being picked for teams. Boy, that'd make me feel so bad. And then I'd try extra hard, and then I'd mess up even more. Did you all ever do that, or was that just me? But I know that I've been accepted by the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I'm going to cast my crowns down at His feet. I've been accepted by who He, what He has done. I all can accept. I can accept. It's not because of who I am. It's not because of what I've done through myself or the accolades that I've learned or or the positions that, that I may have tried to gain or didn't gain. But it's I can accept Him because of what He's done for me. Because He come for all, I can be part of that all. You know, we think today, well, I know Jesus. You know, I respect Jesus. I believe in Him. I know what they taught me. I know all about Him. But, but have you accepted Jesus? Have you accepted Him as Lord and Savior of your life? Have you accepted Him of, of, for what He can do? You can know Him all day. You can believe in Him all day. Those are wonderful things. You can express your gratitude towards Him. But unless you've accepted Him as Lord and Savior, it is not good enough. Nor will it ever be good enough. John chapter 10 and verse, verse 19, I believe it is. We see how, how as we have an understanding of what He can do for us, John 10, it says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to to raise it up again. This commandment I have received of my fathers. We need to have that understanding that He's there, and He gives us strength through the times. We have an understanding that he has power to lay it down. Who did he have power to lay it down? He had power to lay it down for us. And because he had power to lay it down, I want to be part of that wonderful blessing. When we accept him, we can accept him knowing that he is the door. He is the door that I can come in and I can go out freely. He is the door that I, that, that I can enter in and shall be saved. He is the door, as verse 9 says, and I apologize that I, that I read the wrong verse, but, but we have an understanding that, that he is he, no power, uh, no power taketh from him. That's what he done for us, and because of that, we can look at verse 9. It says, I am the door, and if any man enter in and shall, find, and shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I'm thankful today as I stand rest assured that I know my Jesus loves me and He's cared for me. He's fought battles for me and He'll still continue to fight battles. I'm thankful today as I stand here today. I'm grateful that I've accepted Him as Lord and Savior of my life. I've missed out on a lot of things, maybe because of, of not being determined enough or, or maybe not just being, a, you hear the old saying, a dollar, uh, a dollar short and a day late. Whatever the case is, we've missed out, but I'm grateful today that I've never, that I'm not missing out on what Jesus has done for me. I'm not missing out on what He's brought me from and where He's going to take me. Every day just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter. As the days go by, He keeps giving me strength, abundant strength to say I can make it through all the trials that I face. So we have an understanding that He come for all. We also have an understanding that all can accept Him. All can accept Him. There's family members in, in our family that one was 78 when he received Christ. One was in his 80s when he received Christ. Defies all statistics. Defies all of them. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter if we're 8 
or five or ten or a hundred and ten, we all can accept Him for who we are and what we have in our lives. Brandy and I's pastor for years is retiring today. Pastor Dole Pruitt, pastor 25 years, better than 25 years at Kingsley Avenue and 52 years, I believe, it is in his ministry. In 1988, he preached a message that he gave to Brandy not too long ago. And on the back side of that message, it said, a little girl by the name of Brandy Lamb got saved today. And, she gave, and he gave that message to her. I'm grateful today. As I called him this morning and told him that I was a praying for him, I'm grateful today that there's still men preaching the blood of Jesus Christ. There's still men teaching that all, he come for all and that all can accept him. And I'm grateful today that we as Christians have an understanding of what he's accepted and what he's brought into our lives. The next thing that I want to look at and the final thing is we all can worship Him. We all can worship Him. You know, as I look across the auditorium and the sanctuary this morning, I see some smiling. I see some that, boy, they're just worshiping. Some raise their hand. I was, I was kind of teasing the back row back over there and this morning. I said, is this the amen corner? And, and, and those ladies, I said, well, won't you get you a little hanky and, and, and start twirling around and have one, of them have one of them high-pitched squeals that makes everybody shout. And they just kind of, we laughed about it. And it, it. All in good fun, all in good fun. But I like looking back there at Sister Grace's face and how it smiles and how it shines. That's worshiping. Jesus. That's worshiping the Lord. I, li I like to look at some, so many of you all that some raise their hand, some say amen, some testify of the goodness. Others are real quiet, but I can just tell way down deep, somewhere down in there, there's just something a bubbling and just so good that you just can't say anything it's so good. But all can worship Him. Why? Because He's accepted us. Because He's come for all. Let's look here in verses 20 of this, this text chapter that we looked at. And, 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 and Luke chapter 2 and verses 20. And I apologize. I, I, I've read some wrong scripture, but it's worked out for the, for the good. But here in, in, in verse 20 it says, and, and, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen and it was told unto them. They, what was told unto them? Verse 10. Which shall be to all people. When the shepherds come to town, you probably smelt them before you seen them. Have you ever been around sheep? Why somebody would want to raise a sheep, I have no idea. They're more prone to, to parasites than just about any farm animal they have. If they get hurt, they're more prone to infections than any farm animal. They're so dumb, a lot of times if you move their trough and move it someplace else, uh, they have a hard time finding it. Yeah, and then I kind of wonder, Jesus, you're comparing me to a sheep? But here they are, dirty, in the field, but they was accepted for who they were when they seen Jesus. Friends, I want to proclaim here today, Jesus will accept you as you are. And you'll go away a different person. Friends, He'll accept you no matter who you are or no matter where you've been, no matter what your attitude is, no matter what your appearance is, He loves you where you're at. And He'll do some changing in your life, in your heart. So the sheep, so the shepherds went away glorifying and praising him. 
We also see over in Philippians chapter 2 and verses 19, verses, uh, verses 9 through 11, uh, Philippians chapter 2, we see gratefully how God is moving and how God is directing us uh, throughout many different directions. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verses 9 through 11, says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Who's him? It's Jesus. And given him a name above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And everything in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and things, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's worthy of all of our praise. How are we worshiping Him today? Are we worshiping with Him with our life? Now we could break that down if with our talents and our time and our tithes. I, I'm, not, I'm just asking, I, I want you to, how about your life here today? Are we worshiping Him in the way that the Bible instructs and commands us to worship Him in spirit and in truth? God knows when you're playing church. Oh, you can pull the wool over your preacher's eyes. Oh, you can pull, over, pull the wool over everybody else's eyes, but there's one person that knows all, and he sees all, and he knows everything about you here today. Let's worship him in sincerity and honor and truth. Let's worship him in the way that we live. When they see us, what do they see? Do they see the old person or do they see the Christian, the blood-born, the, the, the blood-born child of a living God? Do they see us? Do they see who we are and what we can do for us? Do they see Jesus above all today? As we start this Christmas season, you may have already battled the crowds you may have been one of those people that got up at 4.30 or more and on, on Thursday, Friday morning, Thursday morning. Why in the world? I don't know, but maybe you did. Bless your heart. But this right here is the theme of Christmas. When you look at the word Christmas, Christ ought to stand out above all. As we all stand here today,